All right, the next case is Hutchison uh, Island versus Babcock. And uh, this case is in here because it's <laughs> essentially boring. This is what I call the, the case of the boring case. And this is one of the challenges you will often have in law school. You will find a case that is so boring that you, you find yourself nodding off to sleep. Those are the cases you have to be very careful with because you'll find yourself just reading and the words are not making any sense. You're not absorbing anything. And, and, th and that's no good. You have to be able to absorb this material. And uh, what I want to do is like go through this case with you so you have some, some idea of, of how to attack this. This is one of those situations where it's very important for you to do your outlining, very important for you to do your note taking. But also what's important is you take a case like this, uh, and the Hutchinson case, and you look at it, and it, you, know, you start reading the thing, and you, you, you're nodding off to sleep, and then you say to yourself, okay, now what is this case about? So what you do is you look at the outline of the case itself because very often that's what these kinds of cases have. They will have their own outline. What you can do is look at the outline of the case and this will help you to understand the case. Now in this particular case, it starts off with item number one, notice requirements. Item number two, criteria for validating a tax deed or tax sale. Item number three, inadequacy of legal description. Okay, so those give you an idea of where you are with this case. Like, what is what is, what, is, what is the court talking about? And that's important because sometimes this material can, can see can see so esoteric, so boring that you, you know it, 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 it just you can't make any sense out of it. But that's your job to make sense out of. It. That's your, that's that's why these these kinds of cases are put in here. And this is a case where essentially um, it's a it's a warranty deed that was. Uh, uh, involved with this particular case and uh, essentially what, what happened was the owner of this property did, wasn't, wasn't paying taxes uh, on a regular basis and, and because of that, that failure to pay taxes on a regular basis there was a, a series of, of efforts to, uh, to have by someone else to acquire this particular property and ultimately what happened was there were typographical errors uh, by the clerk in terms of, of uh, the names of the individuals that were being notified about uh, the tax sale. And there were also errors concerning um, the, the, uh, an abbreviation of aisle instead of island for the full name of the company and, and other factors. So uh, the case turns on the notice requirement and, 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 and the statute basically says that if you're going to foreclose on someone's property, they, they have to have proper notice. And, in this particular case, the plaintiff is saying, you know, we, we never got the, the proper notice uh, for this particular of, of this particular sale. So that's why you can look at this case now. Now, now, notice requirements is important to you. Now you, you've gotten a sense of what this case is about, and now you can look at notice require, requirements in the outline and say, oh yeah, okay, uh, let's see what the notice requirements are in this particular case. And uh, the court sets forth uh, the statutes that identifies. Um, standards of law and it says uh, very clearly which is important to this case that the clerk is not required to search all public records available to determine the actual status of ownership in addition the clerk has no general duty to determine the accuracy of the tax collector statement in other words in this particular case the tax collector had uh, filed some reports upon which the clerk relied and there were, there were some errors in those reports and and that was part of the problem here uh, court says that notice that is reasonably calculated under all the circumstances to apprise interested parties of the pendency of the action and afford them an opportunity to present their objection is the, is the standard. That's, the, that's what's required. The failure of anyone to receive notice as provided in this particular section does not affect the validity of the tax deed as long as the clerk complies with the notice requirements that are set forth. So, so basically what happens is these guys are out of luck because the clerk clerk complied with the notice requirements, there were errors, there were mistakes, but nevertheless, um, the, cl the clerk did what uh, uh, he or she was supposed to do. Um, and the court goes on to talk about the fact that uh, even if the clerk, clerk had sent the uh, notice addressed to Hutchinson Island Realty instead of Hutchinson Island, um, Hutchinson would not receive the notice because it had not been at <laughs> their address for several years. So, I mean, you know, that, that was their observ observation. Now, the court also goes into a, a section two. So now you've, you've looked at your outline of this boring case, and you see section two. 
criteria for invalidating a tax deed or sale. Okay, so now you understand why this is is uh, is uh, broken down like this because now you you have the different elements of the court's decision. Now they're going to talk about how you invalidate a sale because that's what this is all about. The plaintiff has had his property taken away. It's done by foreclosure, it's done according to the law, and the plaintiff wants to have this tax deed or tax sale invalidated. So here are the standards. And that now this makes sense to you. It was boring you know, when you first started reading it, but as you go over it and you skim it, it starts to make some sense. So the court says that in the instant case, it is undisputed the property was subject, subject to taxes and that Hutchinson failed to pay the taxes. And because of that failure to pay those taxes, it was... Uh, it was uh, held against, the, you know, it was bad because it, they didn't comply with the statute. There are certain standards that you have to have. In other words, the, pro the, f the first one of which the property was, with, was not subject to taxation. Because this, tax, this property was subject to tax, they couldn't have the um, tax sale invalidated. And uh, the court goes on to talk about the inadequacy of the description of the property. Um, and there's other language in here that, that's worth reading, but essentially, What's important for you to, in this particular case is to have an understanding about the sale of land, how, how land is, is transferred, in, particular, in this particular foreclosure sense, and also having an idea of how you read a boring case.